Introduction The Internet A vast global network of computers with information and resources on virtually every subject. Whether you are a student doing research for a class project or a professional gathering information on a client or competitor, the Internet can help you with your task. Do I have to be a computer geek to use the Internet? No. While it is true that it used to be an unfriendly environment, so many people are now online that the Internet has become easier to use. With today's graphical web browsers and mouse click access, learning is a breeze. Don't be intimidated by jargon or technical terms. This presentation is designed to show you how to choose an Internet connection for yourself and introduce you to some useful resources once you are online. Okay, so what type of information is on the Internet? The Internet is made up of thousands of individual computer networks, which are each identified by a different name. For example, NASA's computer network on the Internet is NASA.gov. Let's take a closer look at that name. NASA is the name given to the network by its operators. The last three-letter extension, gov, tells us what category this site falls into. Internet networks inside the United States are assigned three-letter extensions based on the following categories. Education. Most major universities have at least some information posted on the Internet, which includes papers and studies, as well as research tools. Educational network sites are given an EDU extension. Government. These networks include all types of government information, including any government libraries or research centers. Government sites have a GOV at the end of their names. Commercial. Commerce on the Internet is one of the fastest growing segments. This can include everything from car dealerships to computer companies. Any commercial Internet network is assigned a COM suffix. Organizations. Non-profit and special interest organizations on the Internet, such as Greenpeace, are given the three-letter extension ORG. Military. Although some of these sites fall under the GOV suffix, certain military organizations are recognized with the MIL extension. Foreign sites. Computer networks outside the United States do not usually use the three-letter suffixes. Instead, they use their two-letter country code as their suffix. Section 2, Parts of the Internet. The services on the Internet are divided into different categories. Here are brief explanations and examples of the facets you are likely to use. Email. This is the most popular use of the Internet. Simply put, Email allows you to send and receive messages to and from different people all over the world. You will also find that you can join mailing lists, which provide you with useful information on many subjects. FTP File Transfer Protocol FTP allows the user to access Internet computer networks, which serve as libraries of computer software. Using FTP, you can copy this software to your computer for your own use. World Wide Web The World Wide Web is a collection of Internet resources presented on full-color computer network sites called pages. These pages contain text and pictures, even sound. The World Wide Web is the fastest growing part of the Internet. News Groups what are your interests? No matter what the answer is, you will probably find groups of people on the Internet who share them. You can post your ideas and comments to these people using news groups, which are a kind of global bulletin board. All this with no long-distance charges. 
Information can be gathered from all over the globe. Connect with people in faraway countries. As long as the phone number you dialed in order to connect to the Internet is local, you pay no long-distance charges. Some Internet lingo you will use. Now that you understand some of the parts of the Internet, here are a few useful terms that everyone needs to know before signing on. Username. This is your online identity. Depending on how you access the Internet, this name will vary. Some services allow you to pick your own username, while others are not quite so democratic. This username is how you will be identified while online. Password. This is your online security blanket. After choosing or being assigned a username, you will be asked for a password. The password keeps unauthorized people from accessing your Internet account. Service Provider This is a company or institution which gives you Internet access. By using the modem in your computer, you can call the service provider's computer network, log in with your username and password, and use the Internet. Think of a service provider as your home base on the Internet. Email address. In order for people to send you electronic messages, you will need an email address. No matter how you access the Internet, your email address will always look something like this. Your username at service provider. Site name or Internet address. This is the location of an Internet computer network. For example, the White House might have the following Internet address. WhiteHouse.gov Internet Connections for You The user has a wide variety of choices when it comes to connecting to the Internet. In this section, we will discuss and compare these choices to help you decide which is right for you. Online Services Using an online service such as America Online is a very popular way to access the Internet. Online services are private computer networks which allow users to use their information for a fee. By using a simple graphical menu, the user can access information such as news, finance, weather, game software, and a variety of other features. In addition, online services offer the user a relatively simple way to access the Internet. How do I connect to an online service? The best part about online services is that the software needed to use them is easily available at no cost. Any computer magazine or store will probably have sample disks for free. The software itself should be painless to install, and you should be up and running in no time. You will not need any other software to access the Internet. Your online service provides you with everything you will need to get up and running. In other words, you will not have to purchase any additional software in order to browse the World Wide Web or get your email. These features will already be built into the menu interface of the online service. How much do online services cost? Depending on the service you choose, the cost can vary. Online services are offering different rate plans, and you will have to compare on your own. However, most of these services are providing a basic rate of $9.95 a month for a set number of hours. Although the number of hours varies, it is usually five. After five hours of online time, you will be charged a certain amount per hour. This charge ranges from $2.95 per hour on up. What are the advantages of an online service? Ease of use. Online services use graphical menus to access their different features, so the learning curve is usually very low. Most new users can confidently navigate an online service in a short period of time. Security. If someone sends you abusive mail or interferes with your enjoyment of an online service, you can usually call a virtual security guard who will remove the offending person. Parents will find that these services also take many security precautions with children, 
so that they cannot get into unsavory areas of the Internet. No additional software. Since the disk you use to install the online service is all-inclusive, you will not have to spend extra time trying to get your email software or World Wide Web browser to work. Simply install the online service and you will have no more configuring to do in order to use the Internet. What are the disadvantages of an online service? Cost. Since most online services charge a base rate of $9.95 per month for five hours, plus $2.95 an hour afterwards, fees can quickly add up. If you intend to be online for over 20 hours a month, this should be a consideration. Censorship. Some online services limit the content that the user can access on the Internet. While it is appropriate to do this for children, adults should be given the choice to view and read what they wish. Internet Service Providers Internet Service Providers, or ISPs, are private companies who sell Internet access. Unlike online services, most ISPs do not offer a dual disk with a graphical menu. ISPs do not offer any other service other than Internet connection, so they do not support an internal service with other features. However, if you plan on being online for a significant amount of time each month, an ISP is almost certainly more cost effective. How do I connect to an ISP? Any local computer newspaper should have many ISPs for you to choose from. In order to sign up with one, you must call them on the telephone and set up your account. Since you will want to use graphical software to run your Internet account, ask your ISP how much a PPP or SLIP account costs each month. Software. In order to use your Internet account through an ISP, you will either have to purchase separate software or ask your ISP about getting copies from them. You will need the following software. Dialer. A dialer allows your PC to talk to other computers. Your ISP will either provide you with a dialer or help you configure your existing dialer. If your computer is using MS Windows 95, you have a built-in dialer called Dial-Up Networking. See the Windows help file on how to configure this software. Email Program. This software allows you to connect to the ISP's mail server and manage your electronic messages. MS Windows 95 contains a program called MS Exchange. This program can be used as your email software. World Wide Web Browser. This software allows you to use the resources of the fantastic World Wide Web. The browser will bring the web to life with sound and pictures. The two most popular web browsers are Netscape and the Microsoft Internet Explorer. Netscape can be purchased in any computer store or a trial copy can be downloaded from their home page. The Microsoft Internet Explorer comes as part of the Microsoft Plus Pack for Windows 95, or it can be downloaded from the Microsoft Software Library. News Group Browser Most World Wide Web browsers contain a program to browse the global discussion groups, called News Groups. If your browser does not, you will have to acquire another piece of software. How much does an account with an ISP cost? Prices can vary radically with ISPs. It is in your best interest to shop around and get the best possible price. Generally, you should look for an ISP who offers you 50 to 75 hours a month for $25. This is a good guideline to follow when looking for an ISP. Make certain that the ISP you go with has a local number for you to call, or you will wind up paying long-distance charges in addition to your monthly fee. What are the advantages of an ISP? Cost. 
per hour, an ISP is going to be significantly less than an online service. If, if you are going to be online for a significant amount of time each month, an ISP can save you literally hundreds of dollars. The same internet. All other features aside, an ISP is giving you access to the same internet as an online service. The only features you give up are the features which the online service provides. Better software. Although the online service software is easier to use, you will find that the internet-only software is more powerful and probably more reliable. What are the disadvantages of an ISP? Spotty technical support. Since every ISP is an individual company, you will find that technical support might be a problem. Ask your ISP if they have a tech support staff and how you can get any problem solved. Anyone who has stayed up until 2.30 a.m. trying to get their computer to work will realize how important this is. Here today. Since the Internet is such a hot concept these days, you may find dozens of ISPs popping up in your area. Ask your ISP how long he has been in business and about how many customers he has. Higher learning curve. Between configuring software and getting used to the Internet, you will find that an online service probably has a shorter learning time than an account with an ISP. Resources on the Internet. Since you now understand the two different types of typical Internet connections, here are some useful resources to start you on your global journey. Search engines. Using the Internet can be like trying to find information in a huge book which has no table of contents or index. Unless you know where to start, finding specific resources on the Internet can be very frustrating. In order to make finding specific information easier, the World Wide Web has several sites called search engines. Correct use of these engines will cut down on your search time dramatically. Web Crawler The web crawler allows you to type in specific interests and retrieves the names of the appropriate computer networks. For example, by typing in U.S. politics in this area and clicking on search, we will see a list of web pages which pertain to that subject. We can then access those pages by pointing our mouse to one that interests us and clicking. The web crawler allows us to be as general or specific about our search as we wish. In addition, Web Crawler has several ready-to-browse categories full of interesting sites to browse. To access Web Crawler, type this address into your World Wide Web browser. http colon backslash backslash www.webcrawler.com Yahoo! Like Web Crawler, Yahoo! gives you a starting point to search the Internet. Yahoo! has more ready-made categories than the web crawler, which can be chosen from this main menu. In addition, you can type in specific search information in this window. Click on Search and quickly have useful sites at your disposal. Useful Software In addition to useful information, the Internet can also be a source of many useful software applications for your home PC. Don't worry, this is all perfectly legal. The software you can download from the Internet is known as Shareware. Shareware allows the user to try an application for a certain amount of time before buying it. Please read the license agreement of any software you download for more information. Microsoft. Do you have a DOS? Windows or Windows 95 based computer? Do you have a Macintosh which uses Microsoft applications like Word or Excel? Microsoft Software Library has literally thousands of templates, patches, and add-ons for your favorite Microsoft programs. To access this site from your World Wide Web browser, type in this name. 
FTP colon backslash backslash FTP dot Microsoft dot com. Once logged in, please read the file called index.txt for further instructions. To change the directories, just point the mouse to the folders and click. Oak Archives The Oak Archives are widely known as the most popular software site on the Internet. By browsing the resources of the Oak Archives, the user can find anything from useful business tools to great games. You can access the Oak Archives with this World Wide Web address. HTTP colon backslash backslash www.acs.oakland.edu The White House Anything you wish to know about the First Family or the White House itself is available here. Some of the highlights include a virtual tour which includes pictures, an audio address from the President, and the ability to send an email message to either he or the Vice President. The address to access the White House web page is http colon backslash backslash www2 dot white house dot gov backslash wh backslash welcome dot html make certain to sign the guest book before you leave nasa are you gathering information on our space program or do you just want some close-up pictures of jupiter it doesn't matter because this site contains it all anything you wish to know about our country's space program is available here by using the clickable map of the United States, the user can access any branch of NASA. To access NASA, use this address in your web browser. HTTP colon backslash backslash www.nasa.gov Library of Congress This is the launching point to all of the vast resources of the Library of Congress. Search here for information on government, Congress and law. Access the Library of Congress with this address. HTTP colon backslash backslash lcweb dot loc dot gov backslash homepage backslash lchp dot html. Prepare to spend time here. The breadth of available information is staggering. The Louvre Museum. Browse and learn about the fantastic treasures at the Louvre in Paris. All exhibits are separated into categories for easy access and no trip is necessary. Use this address to access the Louvre online. HTTP colon backslash backslash www.paris.org backslash m-u-s-e-e-s -E -E backslash Louvre. Since you can copy the images to your computer, you will not even need a camera. The Virtual Tourist Are you taking a business trip or a dream vacation soon? Do you just wish you could travel? The Virtual Tourist and CityNet will provide you with online maps and information on almost any country in the world. The only thing missing from your tour will be the frequent flyer miles. Access the Virtual Tourist with this web address http colon backslash backslash www.vtourist.com backslash news cnn interactive keep on top of the latest headlines with cnn's world wide web site detailed information on weather and sports financial news, and the latest in world events is at your fingertips. With this powerful tool, there is no need to break away from your busy workday to watch TV. Use CNN Interactive at http colon backslash backslash www.cnn.com. The Wall Street Journal. In addition to the latest in financial information, Browse the various educational tools. Virtually all articles from the printed version are available here every day.
You may even choose to subscribe. The web address is http colon backslash backslash www.wsj.com. Of course, there is more to the Internet than just government and business. Visit this site for a little bit of fun. Just type in this address using your web browser. Virtual Movie Studio. Take a tour of MCA Universal and check out interactive previews of the latest movie releases. If you love the movies, this site is for you. Use the web address http colon backslash backslash www.mca.com to access Universal Studios on the Internet. Remember, no single Internet provider owns these stops on the Internet. In other words, it doesn't matter what method you use to connect. You can access the sites we just visited from an online service or an ISP. Also, we have just completed a very quick global journey, but we did not pay one cent for long distance, as long as the number we called to access the Internet was local. Get going! After our virtual tour, you are probably ready to pick out a method of internet connection and strike out on your own. Of course, the previous offerings do not even scratch the surface of the information available to you on the internet. As you explore, you will find information and resources that you had never even thought of before your internet odyssey. Now that you understand your basic internet connection choices and discovered some interesting places to visit around the globe, enjoy your online journey. Introduction The Internet A vast global network of computers with information and resources on virtually every subject. Whether you are a student doing research for a class project or a professional gathering information on a client or competitor, the Internet can help you with your task. Do I have to be a computer geek to use the Internet? No. While it is true that it used to be an unfriendly environment, so many people are now online that the Internet has become easier to use. With today's graphical web browsers and mouse click access, learning is a breeze. Don't be intimidated by jargon or technical terms. This presentation is designed to show you how to choose an Internet connection for yourself and introduce you to some useful resources once you are online. Okay, so what type of information is on the Internet? The Internet is made up of thousands of individual computer networks, which are each identified by a different name. For example, NASA's computer network on the Internet is NASA.gov. 
Let's take a closer look at that name. NASA is the name given to the network by its operators. The last three-letter extension, GOV, tells us what category this site falls into. Internet networks inside the United States are assigned three-letter extensions based on the following categories. Education. Most major universities have at least some information posted on the Internet, which includes papers and studies, as well as research tools. Educational network sites are given an EDU extension. Government. These networks include all types of government information, including any government libraries or research centers. Government sites have a GOV at the end of their names. Commercial. Commerce on the Internet is one of the fastest growing segments. This can include everything from car dealerships to computer companies. Any commercial Internet network is assigned a COM suffix. Organizations. Nonprofit and special interest organizations on the Internet, such as Greenpeace, are given the three-letter extension ORG. Military. Although some of these sites fall under the GOV suffix, certain military organizations are recognized with the MIL extension. Foreign sites. Computer networks outside the United States do not usually use the three-letter suffixes. Instead, they use their two-letter country code as their suffix. Section 2, Parts of the Internet. The services on the Internet are divided into different categories. Here are brief explanations and examples of the facets you are likely to use. Email. This is the most popular use of the Internet. Simply put, Email allows you to send and receive messages to and from different people all over the world. You will also find that you can join mailing lists, which provide you with useful information on many subjects. FTP File Transfer Protocol FTP allows the user to access Internet computer networks, which serve as libraries of computer software. Using FTP, you can copy this software to your computer for your own use. World Wide Web The World Wide Web is a collection of Internet resources presented on full-color computer network sites called pages. These pages contain text and pictures, even sound. The World Wide Web is the fastest growing part of the Internet. News Groups what are your interests? No matter what the answer is, you will probably find groups of people on the Internet who share them. You can post your ideas and comments to these people using news groups, which are a kind of global bulletin board. All this with no long-distance charges. Information can be gathered from all over the globe, connect with people in faraway countries. As long as the phone number you dialed in order to connect to the Internet is local, you pay no long-distance charges. Some Internet lingo you will use. Now that you understand some of the parts of the Internet, here are a few useful terms that everyone needs to know before signing on. Username. This is your online identity. Depending on how you access the Internet, this name will vary. Some services allow you to pick your own username, while others are not quite so democratic. This username is how you will be identified while online. Password. This is your online security blanket. After choosing or being assigned a username, you will be asked for a password. The password keeps unauthorized people from accessing your Internet account. Service Provider. This is a company or institution which gives you Internet access. By using the modem in your computer, you can call the service provider's computer network, log in with your username and password, and use the Internet. Think of a service provider as your home base on the Internet. Email address. In order for people to send you electronic messages, you will need an email address. 
No matter how you access the Internet, your email address will always look something like this. Your username at service provider. Site name or Internet address. This is the location of an Internet computer network. For example, the White House might have the following Internet address. Whitehouse.gov Internet connections for you. The user has a wide variety of choices when it comes to connecting to the Internet. In this section, we will discuss and compare these choices to help you decide which is right for you. Online services. Using an online service such as America Online is a very popular way to access the Internet. Online services are private computer networks which allow users to use their information for a fee. By using a simple graphical menu, the user can access information such as news, finance, weather, game software, and a variety of other features. In addition, online services offer the user a relatively simple way to access the Internet. How do I connect to an online service? The best part about online services is that the software needed to use them is easily available at no cost. Any computer magazine or store will probably have sample disks for free. The software itself should be painless to install, and you should be up and running in no time. You will not need any other software to access the Internet. Your online service provides you with everything you will need to get up and running. In other words, you will not have to purchase any additional software in order to browse the World Wide Web or get your email. These features will already be built into the menu interface of the online service. How much do online services cost? Depending on the service you choose, the cost can vary. Online services are offering different rate plans, and you will have to compare on your own. However, most of these services are providing a basic rate of $9.95 a month for a set number of hours. Although the number of hours varies, it is usually five. After five hours of online time, you will be charged a certain amount per hour. This charge ranges from $2.95 per hour on up. What are the advantages of an online service? Ease of use. Online services use graphical menus to access their different features, so the learning curve is usually very low. Most new users can confidently navigate an online service in a short period of time. Security. If someone sends you abusive mail or interferes with your enjoyment of an online service, you can usually call a virtual security guard who will remove the offending person. Parents will find that these services also take many security precautions with children so that they cannot get into unsavory areas of the Internet. No additional software. Since the disk you use to install the online service is all-inclusive, you will not have to spend extra time trying to get your email software or World Wide Web browser to work. Simply install the online service, and you will have no more configuring to do in order to use the Internet. What are the disadvantages of an online service? Cost. Since most online services charge a base rate of $9.95 per month for five hours, plus $2.95 an hour afterwards, fees can quickly add up. If you intend to be online for over 20 hours a month, this should be a consideration. Censorship. Some online services limit the content that the user can access on the Internet. While it is appropriate to do this for children, adults should be given the choice to view and read what they wish. Internet Service Providers. Internet Service Providers, or ISPs, are private companies who sell Internet access. Unlike online services, most ISPs do not offer a dual disk with a graphical menu. ISPs do not offer any other service other than Internet connection, so they do not support an internal service with other features. 
However, if you plan on being online for a significant amount of time each month, an ISP is almost certainly more cost effective. How do I connect to an ISP? Any local computer newspaper should have many ISPs for you to choose from. In order to sign up with one, you must call them on the telephone and set up your account. Since you will want to use graphical software to run your internet account, ask your ISP how much a PPP or SLIP account costs each month. Software. In order to use your internet account through an ISP, you will either have to purchase separate software or ask your ISP about getting copies from them. You will need the following software. Dialer. A dialer allows your PC to talk to other computers. Your ISP will either provide you with a dialer or help you configure your existing dialer. If your computer is using MS Windows 95, you have a built-in dialer called Dial-Up Networking. See the Windows help file on how to configure this software. Email Program This software allows you to connect to the ISP's mail server and manage your electronic messages. MS Windows 95 contains a program called MS Exchange. This program can be used as your email software. World Wide Web Browser This software allows you to use the resources of the fantastic World Wide Web. The browser will bring the web to life with sound and pictures. The two most popular web browsers are Netscape and the Microsoft Internet Explorer. Netscape can be purchased in any computer store or a trial copy can be downloaded from their home page. The Microsoft Internet Explorer comes as part of the Microsoft Plus Pack for Windows 95, or it can be downloaded from the Microsoft Software Library. News Group Browser Most World Wide Web browsers contain a program to browse the global discussion groups, called News Groups. If your browser does not, you will have to acquire another piece of software. How much does an account with an ISP cost? Prices can vary radically with ISPs. It is in your best interest to shop around and get the best possible price. Generally, you should look for an ISP who offers you 50 to 75 hours a month for $25. This is a good guideline to follow when looking for an ISP. Make certain that the ISP you go with has a local number for you to call, or you will wind up paying long-distance charges in addition to your monthly fee. What are the advantages of an ISP? Cost. Per hour, an ISP is going to be significantly less than an online service. If you are going to be online for a significant amount of time each month, an ISP can save you literally hundreds of dollars. The same Internet. All other features aside, an ISP is giving you access to the same Internet as an online service. The only features you give up are the features which the online service provides. Better software. Although the online service software is easier to use, you will find that the Internet-only software is more powerful and probably more reliable. What are the disadvantages of an ISP? Spotty technical support. Since every ISP is an individual company, you will find that technical support might be a problem. Ask your ISP if they have a tech support staff and how you can get any problems solved. Anyone who has stayed up until 2.30 a.m. trying to get their computer to work will realize how important this is. Here today. Since the Internet is such a hot concept these days, you may find dozens of ISPs popping up in your area. Ask your ISP how long he has been in business and about how many customers he has. Higher Learning Curve 
Between configuring software and getting used to the Internet, you will find that an online service probably has a shorter learning time than an account with an ISP. Resources on the Internet Since you now understand the two different types of typical Internet connections, here are some useful resources to start you on your global journey. Search Engines Using the Internet can be like trying to find information in a huge book which has no table of contents or index. Unless you know where to start, finding specific resources on the Internet can be very frustrating. In order to make finding specific information easier, the World Wide Web has several sites called search engines. Correct use of these engines will cut down on your search time dramatically. Web Crawler the web crawler allows you to type in specific interests and retrieves the names of the appropriate computer networks. For example, by typing in U.S. politics in this area and clicking on search, we will see a list of web pages which pertain to that subject. We can then access those pages by pointing our mouse to one that interests us and clicking. The web crawler allows us to be as general or specific about our search as we wish. In addition, web crawler has several ready-to-browse categories full of interesting sites to browse. To access web crawler, type this address into your World Wide Web browser. http colon backslash backslash www.webcrawler.com Yahoo! Like Webcrawler, Yahoo! gives you a starting point to search the Internet. Yahoo! has more ready-made categories than the Webcrawler, which can be chosen from this main menu. In addition, you can type in specific search information in this window. Click on Search and quickly have useful sites at your disposal. Useful Software in addition to useful information, the Internet can also be a source of many useful software applications for your home PC. Don't worry, this is all perfectly legal. The software you can download from the Internet is known as Shareware. Shareware allows the user to try an application for a certain amount of time before buying it. Please read the license agreement of any software you download for more information. Microsoft. Do you have a DOS, Windows, or Windows 95 based computer? Do you have a Macintosh which uses Microsoft applications like Word or Excel? Microsoft's software library has literally thousands of templates, patches, and add-ons for your favorite Microsoft programs. To access this site from your World Wide Web browser, type in this name, ftp colon backslash backslash ftp.microsoft.com Once logged in, please read the file called index.txt for further instructions. To change the directories, just point the mouse to the folders and click. Oak Archives The Oak Archives are widely known as the most popular software site on the Internet. By browsing the resources of the Oak Archives, the user can find anything from useful business tools to great games. You can access the Oak Archives with this World Wide Web address. http colon backslash backslash www.acs.oakland.edu The White House Anything you wish to know about the First Family or the White House itself is available here. Some of the highlights include a virtual tour, which includes pictures, an audio address from the President, and the ability to send an email message to either he or the Vice President. The address to access the White House web page is http colon backslash backslash www2 dot white house dot gov backslash wh backslash welcome dot 
HTML. Make certain to sign the guest book before you leave. NASA. Are you gathering information on our space program? Or do you just want some close-up pictures of Jupiter? It doesn't matter because this site contains it all. Anything you wish to know about our country's space program is available here. By using the clickable map of the United States, the user can access any branch of NASA. To access NASA, use this address in your web browser. HTTP colon backslash backslash www.nasa.gov Library of Congress this is the launching point to all of the vast resources of the Library of Congress. Search here for information on government, Congress, and law. Access the Library of Congress with this address, http colon backslash backslash lcweb.loc.gov backslash homepage backslash lchp.html. Prepare to spend time here. The breadth of available information is staggering. The Louvre Museum. Browse and learn about the fantastic treasures at the Louvre in Paris. All exhibits are separated into categories for easy access, and no trip is necessary. Use this address to access the Louvre online. HTTP colon backslash backslash www.paris.org backslash m-u-s-e-e -E backslash louvre. Since you can copy the images to your computer, you will not even need a camera. The Virtual Tourist. Are you taking a business trip or a dream vacation soon? Do you just wish you could travel? The Virtual Tourist and CityNet will provide you with online maps and information on almost any country in the world. The only thing missing from your tour will be the frequent flyer miles. Access the virtual tourist with this web address. HTTP colon backslash backslash www.vtourist.com backslash. News. CNN Interactive. Keep on top of the latest headlines with CNN's World Wide Web site. Detailed information on weather and sports, financial news, and the latest in world events is at your fingertips. With this powerful tool, there is no need to break away from your busy workday to watch TV. Use CNN Interactive at http colon backslash backslash www.cnn.com. The Wall Street Journal. In addition to the latest in financial information, browse the various educational tools. Virtually all articles from the printed version are available here every day. You may even choose to subscribe. The web address is http colon backslash backslash www.wsj.com. Of course, there is more to the Internet than just government and business. Visit this site for a little bit of fun. Just type in this address using your web browser. Virtual Movie Studio. Take a tour of MCA Universal and check out interactive previews of the latest movie releases. If you love the movies, this site is for you. Use the web address http colon backslash backslash www.mca.com to access Universal Studios on the internet. Remember, no single internet provider owns these stops on the internet. In other words, it doesn't matter what method you use to connect. You can access the sites you just visited from an online service or an ISP.
Also, we have just completed a very quick global journey, but we did not pay one cent for long distance, as long as the number we called to access the internet was local. Get going! After our virtual tour, you are probably ready to pick out a method of internet connection and strike out on your own. Of course, the previous offerings do not even scratch the surface of the information available to you on the internet. As you explore, you will find information and resources that you had never even thought of before your internet odyssey. Now that you understand your basic internet connection choices and discovered some interesting places to visit around the globe, enjoy your online journey. The amazing World Wide Web. This exciting part of the communications revolution called the Internet is growing at a phenomenal rate. Using the friendly point-and-click interface of the web, even novice computer users can quickly become global travelers. The web is made up of hundreds of thousands of individual pages. These web pages can contain information about business, education, travel, law, or leisure activities. Certain web pages are even made and maintained by individuals and families, designed to provide information about themselves and their interests. Small business owners are finding that a simple web page can help them to spread the word about their services, allowing potential customers to see their products. These individuals and small businesses who make and maintain their own web pages are not necessarily computer geniuses or even very computer literate. During the next half hour, we will show you how you can easily design your own web page using software programs that are probably already on your computer. You will not have to invest a lot of time or money to make a great web page. Before beginning the process of building your web page, you will need to make certain that your computer contains the following programs. In order to view the various pages of the World Wide Web, you will need to have access to a web browser. The two most popular browsers being Netscape Navigator and Microsoft Internet Explorer. These programs allow you to visit the global community of web pages and use their resources. In addition, you can use the web browser software to view your own page as you build it. This will help you catch mistakes and let you see if your design meets your expectations. A text editor allows you to write and save text files. Every computer equipped with Windows or Windows 95 includes a text editing tool called Notepad. By using Notepad, we can write all of the commands and text that we need for our web page. Any piece of software that can create and edit text can be used for this, so if you prefer to use MS Word or WordPerfect, feel free. As you surf the World Wide Web,
you will see a variety of web pages with designs ranging from very simple to extremely complex. No matter how bizarre the design, all web pages contain roughly the same elements. All web pages have a specific name or address that you must type in before accessing them, called a URL, Uniform Resource Locator. For example, the URL of a company called Whizbang Inc. might be www.whizbang.com. All web pages have a URL. We will show you how to obtain one for your page later in the program. All web pages are at least partially written using a group of formatting codes called HTML. Short for Hypertext Markup Language, HTML is the standard used to turn lifeless text such as this into an interactive web page. During our time together, we will show you how to make use of HTML to start your own web page. HTML uses a series of codes called tags to format your web page. For example, if you wanted to make a sentence in your web page stand out in boldface, you would use this tag. Please note the format of the tag. We will review this in our next section. Using HTML tags, we are able to make our web page look however we choose. Get on the World Wide Web and start looking at pages. As you already know, these pages were created using various HTML tags. In order to look at these tags and see how the page builder used them, use your web browser to view the source. The source is the name given to the text and tags used to build a site. You can view the source of any website on the Internet. Consult the help file of your web browser to see how you view the source of a page. Viewing the source of completed web pages can help you to design your own. Using your text editor, we can now begin to build your site. Please note that HTML tags are not case sensitive, meaning that you can type them in capital or lowercase letters. When using these tags, you must tell the computer when to start reading HTML format and when to stop. All HTML tags are opened like this. When closing an HTML tag, make sure to add a backslash. This is a stop command, which tells the computer that you are through with a particular HTML function. First, we must add the HTML tag. This tells any web browser that the content of the following document is a web page. Do not use the stop HTML command until you are completely done with your web page. While you are writing your page, it may be helpful to keep notes on your progress. Using this comment tag, you can write messages that will not be visible on the web page unless someone views your source code. Remember to use the stop command when you are done note taking. When your website is finished and people visit, it will no doubt become a personal favorite to them. When people save their favorite websites, they do so by adding a bookmark from their browser to the page. By using this title tag, we give our page a bookmark name so that people who visit can easily come again. In other words, whatever title you put between these tags is what will appear if others save a bookmark to it. Otherwise, this title will be invisible on your page. After finishing your title, close the title tag using the title stop command. Now that we have determined that this is an HTML file and given our page a title for others to remember, let's add a header to welcome our visitors. Headers are added using this tag with numbers ranging from 1 to 6. H1 is the largest header size looking like this. H6 is the smallest as represented here. The header should give the viewer an idea of the content of your page or simply welcome them. This header will be visible on your page so be creative.
After finishing your header, use the Header Stop command. When the header is completed, use this body tag to begin work on the main part of your web page. This tells the web browser to treat anything after this tag as the body of your page. Do not use the Stop Body command until you are done with your page. At this point, you may wish to use the comment tag to remind yourself to close the HTML and body tags when you are done with your page. Now that we have the start of our web page file, let's save our work. From the File menu, choose Save. Save your file as mypage.htm and click on the Save button. Please repeat this process at the end of each section so you know that your hard work is safe. This is the most important part of building your site, since these are the words used to describe the subject of the page. Text can include directions on how to use the page's resources, information about the content of the page, as well as information on the page's chosen subject. All other bells and whistles aside, what you choose to use as your written text is the most important part of your web page. The tags we will discuss in this section will show you how to assemble and format your text on your web page. To begin separating your text into paragraphs, use the Start Paragraph tag. Any text typed in will be included in this paragraph. To stop the paragraph, use this Stop Paragraph tag. You must use these Start and Stop tags whenever you wish to make a new paragraph. If you wish to separate your paragraphs with spaces, use the Carriage Return tag. This tag does not require a stop tag, as it is intended to stand alone. Use this tag to put spaces between your paragraphs, or between your header and your paragraphs. Now that you know how to put your text into paragraphs, and how to put spaces between the paragraphs, these next few tags will show you how to spice up your text with special formatting. If you have a line of text that you wish to stand out with boldface, use this Open Boldface tag. Any text you type between this and the Close Boldface will appear bolded when you view it with your web browser. In addition to boldface, you can italicize any lines in your text paragraphs. Using the Open Italics tag, Type in the line you wish to have italicized. Please remember to use the Close Italics tag when you are done, or the italics won't stop. Do you want to look at your web page to see if the boldface and italics are where you think they should be? First, save your work in your text editor. Next, from your web browser's File menu, choose Open, and open your file, which we named MyPage.htm. Your infant web page should appear, allowing you to troubleshoot. If there are any particular parts of your text that you wish to have centered, use the Open Centering tag to begin the task. Any text between this and the Stop Centering tag will be center justified on your web page. Remember, use the Stop Centering tag when you are through, or all text will be centered. In your text paragraphs, you may want some individual letters, words, or sentences to stand out by being either bigger or smaller. By using the Open Font Size tag, you can enlarge the font from plus 1 to plus 7, or reduce it from minus 1 to minus 7. Please note that font and size are two separate words in this tag, so don't put them together. When you are through manipulating the font size, use the stop command. Instead of just relying on boldface or size to convey the point of your text, change the color of the words themselves. Using the font color tag, you can change the color of individual words or sentences to give your paragraphs more impact. You may change the color to red, green, blue, yellow, or most any color you can think of. Remember to use the Stop Font command to discontinue the special coloring.
In this section, we have added and manipulated the text portion of your web page. These tags do not stand alone. If you wish to combine a few of them in the same paragraph, such as font size and coloring, just remember that you must open a separate tag for each function and close each function separately. After adding and manipulating your text, remember to save your file. Don't just depend on words to convey the message of your web page. Give your visitors access to other web resources offering information on similar subjects as yours, or give them the locations of some of your favorite websites. More importantly, give your visitors access to you by leaving your email address. All of these previous functions can be achieved by using the links tags available in HTML. Using links, you give users the ability to use other resources besides your own page. Links are simply the underlined access points that you click on to go from one page to another on the World Wide Web. In order to connect other users with some of your favorite websites, find the URL of the page you wish to connect to and create a link using the href tag. Write a sentence of text in your web page explaining the purpose of this link, whether it is a similar site, personal favorite, etc. In order for the link to work, you must create an anchor word that will activate the transfer. An anchor is simply a word or phrase that will appear as an underlined link on your web page. Most people will use statements such as click here or go here as their anchor statements but you are encouraged to be creative. When you reach the point in your sentence where you want to place your anchor, open the href tag like this. The A part of the tag means that the statement which follows the open href tag is the anchor statement. The href simply tells the browser that you are creating a link. After the equal sign, type in the URL of the page you are linking to and close the brackets. Note that the URL must have quotation marks around it in order to be considered valid. Next, type in your anchor statement. Finally, close the anchor with this tag. At this point, save your work and open your web browser. If you have an Internet account, you may want to get online, open your web page file, and test the link you have created to see if it connects you to the website you wanted. After the success of your first link, you will probably want to create many more. In order to organize these on your web page, you may wish to create an unordered list using this tag. An unordered list separates elements of your web page line by line using bullets to separate them. To start an unordered list of your links, put your cursor above the first link we created during the last exercise. Type the Start Unordered List tag. Next, move your cursor in front of the sentence you wrote to describe your first link and type the List Item tag. For every link you create, make sure that you use this List Item tag at the beginning of each sentence. When you are finished making your list, use the Stop Unordered List tag to resume normal typing. After you're through, your list of links will look something like this. Remember to save your work after finishing your list of links. Your web page now contains formatted text and a list of links to your favorite websites. Next, we're going to add a link which will allow users to access you by email. Using the carriage return tag, put a space or two between your links list and this new line. Next, Type a sentence explaining that this line provides a link to your email box. Decide on an anchor statement for this line. Some people simply use their email address. And open the href tag. After the equal sign, open quotation marks and type in mail to colon. After the colon, type in your email address. When the address is in place, close the quotation marks, then the bracket and type your anchor statement, closing the anchor tag when you are finished. Save your work and open your web browser. Find and open your web page file and test the mail to link.
If it works, everyone who visits your page can now easily send you email with his or her feedback. Why use this boring white background for your web page? Using your mouse, place the cursor after the letter Y in your body tag. Press the space bar and type the body color tag. Specify by name which color you prefer and close the tag. Save your work and open the file using your web browser. If you used the tag correctly, your web page background should now be a different color. Make sure that the new background color is not making your web page text difficult to read. You can also specify within the body tag what color your hypertext link should be. Most web browsers use blue as the default link color, but we can specify whatever we wish. Place your mouse cursor after the Y in the body tag again and type this command to change the link color. Save your work and look at your web page file through your browser to see if the changes were made correctly. Once a visitor has used links on your page, they change color. It is important for the links to change color after use so that visitors will not become confused about which of your page's resources they have used. By adding a visited link color specifier after the body tag, we can change this color to anything we choose. Save your work and check your web page with the browser after you are done changing the colors. It is important to note that the commands we just introduced can all be used together within the body tag. In other words, you can combine them on the same line as shown in this example. If you have done your exercises from Part 1, then you already know how to create a bulleted list of items. In this exercise, we will show how to create a numbered list. Numbered lists can be useful if you are creating a list of your company's objectives or benefits of your services. To change your unordered list to an ordered list, place your mouse cursor next to the unordered list tag in your web page file and erase it. Now type in this tag. Since the list item tag is the same for ordered and unordered list, you do not have to change these tags. Put your mouse cursor at the beginning of the Close Unordered List tag and erase it, closing your ordered list in this fashion. Save your work and open your web page with the browser and make certain that the bullets of your listed items have been replaced with numbers. As you know, we can use the href tag to create links to other pages on the web or even to our email box. Using this tag, we can create links within our own page, allowing people to jump from one section of text to another without having to use the scroll bar. Place your mouse cursor at the beginning of one of the text paragraphs you created, open a bracket, and type this name tag. Give this anchor the name Paragraph 1 and close the bracket. Save your work and place your mouse cursor at the top of the web page file, underneath the body tag. Begin typing the href tag, but instead of referencing an outside web page, type paragraph 1 in this fashion. Make certain you have the pound sign in place, or your link will not work. Close the bracket and type your anchor statement. The statement should say something like, click here to see paragraph 1. Close the anchor statement tag, save your work, and open the web browser. You should see a new link at the top of the page. Activating this link causes you to move the named paragraph. We can also use this tag to move from the paragraph back to the top of the page. Close the web browser and open your source file. Place your mouse cursor in front of the paragraph 1 link and open a name tag. Use top as the name for this link and close the tag. Move your mouse cursor down to the end of the first paragraph, open the href tag, and type in the top marker. Close the tag and type in back to the top as your anchor statement. Close the anchor tag and save your work. When you view these latest changes through the web browser, you can see that we are now able to move to the first paragraph and back to the top of the page. 
Repeat the process of naming paragraphs and creating links for them until each has its own link at the top of the page. As you can see, this makes a quick index for your text, allowing users easier access to your information. If you are confident using this tag, let's try a more advanced lesson. Using your text editor, create a blank file. At the top, type in your HTML and body tags. Open the header tag and type index of my web page, then close the header tag. Create links to the marked places in your original web page file by opening the href tag and typing in the name of your web page file, then the name of the marked place. Close the tag and type an anchor statement which says link to paragraph 1. Close the anchor tag. Repeat this process as many times as necessary. When you are through, save this file as names.htm and open your web browser. Open this file and try the links. If you have created the links correctly, this page now links to the corresponding marked areas of your original web page. You may want to consider using this quick index approach if your web page is going to contain many paragraphs of text. Since our web page will undoubtedly have many visitors, we should have a simple way for them to send us requests or information within our site. In part one, we showed you how to create a link to your email box by using the Mail To tag. This tag allows the user to write you a message and sends it to your box. In this section, we will show you how to create a form allowing all users to send you very specific information. In a business page, a pre-made form looks much more professional than a simple Mail To command. We will now create a form that will allow users to mail you input. Open a bracket and type the form tag. Since we want the results of this form to be mailed to us, type post after the method tag. This tells the web browser to mail the contents of our form. After the word post, push the spacebar and type action. Type in your email address and close the tag. The entire form tag should look similar to this. This tag will be invisible on your web browser. You will want to write a line of text underneath this tag, telling users that this is a form they should fill out if they wish to be on your mailing list. In order for this form to work, you must have an internet email account. In order to start a mailing list to tell your visitors about changes in your business or web page, we will create two text boxes within our form so that you can contact these people via email. Using the line break tag, create a couple of spaces between your line of text and your first text box. We are going to create a blank text box for visitors to leave their names, so type name after the second line break. Whenever we add an input field to a form, we open this input tag. Since this is a text field, we add the word text after the type modifier. After type, we add the word value to the tag. Note that we must have these two sets of parentheses after value for the box to be blank. Next, we add the name of the data in this text box using the name variable. The size and max length tags indicate the size of the text box and the actual number of characters that can be typed into the box. Next, start a new line and type email after the page break. Repeat the process of creating a text box, this time for email addresses. After completing the source for the second text box, start a new line and type this close forms tag. Save your work and open your web browser. When you open your web page file, Scroll until you see two text labels next to two blank text boxes. Now that we have created two text boxes for our form, we need to make a device for submitting the data called a button. To create a button in your form, reopen the source code and position your mouse cursor above the Close Forms tag. Open a new input tag, but this time use Submit 
as the input type. This tells the browser that we are creating a button that, when clicked, will submit the contents of the form to our email box. The value for this button should read, Submit Form, or something suitable. After the value text has been typed, close the bracket and make certain you have not accidentally erased the Close Forms tag. Save your work, open your web browser, and see if the Submit button is in place and working. Fill out your form and go online. Once you are connected to the Internet, click on your Submit button. Wait a few moments and check your email. Do you have any new messages? Your form data will appear as the attachment, not regular text. In order to read the text, you will have to save the message to your desktop and view its contents with a text editor.